what the heck is jury nullification and why is this important? How could we improve the system? Stand by, I'm gonna break it all down for you. Hey guys, attorney Mark Victor here. You know, we've got some questions from people about jury nullification. Andy and I have mentioned this in some of our other videos, but we really didn't get into any detail to explain what it is, how it works, our thoughts about it. So I wanted to cut this quick video just to let you know. It's one of those things, by the way, I think needs to change in the law in order to improve the justice system. Okay, so what's jury nullification? Well, the idea here is that a jury always has the power to come back with a verdict of not guilty. Now, juries don't get to be informed about this kind of a right. In fact, they actually have to take an oath to the contrary, to not engage in jury nullification. What am I talking about here? When we select a juror, to sit on a jury in a criminal case. Jurors are required to take an oath before they sit on a jury. And part of that oath is to follow the law as given to them by the judge. The judge gets to instruct the jury on what the law is. The way the judge does that is through jury instructions. That's what we lawyers haggle about before the end of a trial. Sometimes there are preliminary jury instructions, which means at the beginning of the trial, before the evidence is presented, we get to give the jury some general overview of what the law is so they can have in their minds as they're listening to the evidence what the evidence elements of the crimes that are charged actually are, so they can think about that. Well, at the end of the case, there are final jury instructions, and we lawyers haggle about them. At our firm, we almost always draft special jury instructions. What these are is jury instructions that are contoured to fit with the defense legal theory of the case. They may go along the lines of, if you find that X, Y, and Z is true, you must acquit the defendant or come back with a not guilty verdict, something along those lines. Depends on what the theory of the case is. And most case law will say that if there's some evidence to support a jury instruction or the defense theory of that defense, the legal theory, then the jury gets that instruction. But what the jury is not allowed to do is to look at those instructions and say, you know what, I disagree with the law here. I'm gonna nullify the law. And even though the prosecutor or the state or the government, if it's a federal case, has proven every element of that charge beyond a reasonable doubt, I'm still gonna come back with a not guilty. Now, why might this be a good thing? Why would I want the jury to be informed about this power? Well, there could be a couple reasons. First reason, the law might be wrong. Okay, the law is wrong right now, at least in my opinion. In many cases, I'm talking about victimless crimes, right? These are essentially moral violations. We should get these out of the law. In terms of gun regulations, there are many crazy victimless Gun regulations, things like the length of the barrel, trigger issues, you know the kinds of things I'm talking about. Imagine I have a client who actually possessed, let's just say, a barrel that was too short and got charged with a felony because the barrel they possessed was too short. There's no victim, nobody's been harmed, nobody's been aggressed upon. This is a regulatory violation. It's something that I don't think should be against the law, even though Congress has decided it is against the law. Well, what if someone is charged with that and they go to trial and it's pretty clear that they actually are guilty of that crime? Maybe they admitted it to the police. Yup, that's my shotgun. Yup, I knew the barrel was too short and I had it anyways. Well, I'd like to argue to that jury, ladies and gentlemen, even if you believe that the government has proven this particular charge, every element of it beyond a reasonable doubt, this is a ridiculous crime. Send a message to the government, tell them to stop charging these ridiculous crimes, nullify the law, and come back with a not guilty. Okay, to be clear, I can't say that. If I do say that, then I am gonna get sanctioned a mistrial is gonna be declared and we're gonna to have to try the case all over again. But I think the law should be changed here to allow jury nullification for that jury to judge the law, not just the facts, and come back and say, we think the law is crazy. Or 
Another situation, maybe the law is fine, but on these particular facts, it just doesn't fit. Andy and I recently did a video in a Mexican restaurant and there was a shooting. There were nine shots. There was a bad guy who came in the restaurant and was trying to commit an armed robbery. In fact, was committing an armed robbery. The good guy, who was a customer at the restaurant, fortunately was carrying a firearm, drew his firearm and fired four shots into the back of the bad guy. The bad guy then falls down and loses the firearm. Okay, four more shots are fired and then the good guy picks up the firearm and shoots another round, killing the bad guy. Maybe the bad guy was already dead. We don't know and we'll never know. All right, probably that last shot was a bad shot. Very hard to justify that last shot. On the other hand, this case was brought before a Texas grand jury, and the Texas grand jury, at least in my opinion, did exactly jury nullification. Maybe they thought, you know what, this is a bad shot, but on these facts, we're not going to indict the guy. That's what I'm talking about when I say maybe the law normally is fine, but on a particular set of facts, the jury should have the option to come back with a not guilty. Now, in this case, I was just referring to it was a grand jury, and so they decided not to indict, and they certainly have that power as well. But what if they did indict? Shouldn't I be able to stand in front of that jury at this guy's criminal trial and say, ladies and gentlemen, even if you think that that last shot actually violated the law and the state proved it beyond a reasonable doubt, you can still come back with a not guilty because you know what? This guy's the good guy, the other guy's the bad guy. You can't expect him to act perfectly under the law. Maybe it was unreasonable, but you should still give him a pass and come back with a not guilty. The founding fathers of our country didn't have any problem with jury nullification. It was one of the main things they talked about. They said a lot about jury nullification because the jury is supposed to be the final check against a tyrannical government. That's why the founding fathers insisted on the right to a jury trial. In fact, some states would not ratify the United States Constitution unless and until the right to a jury trial was enshrined in the Constitution because they felt that strongly, that members of the community should be the final judge of not just the facts, but the law as well. All right, so as I've said a few times in this video, jury nullification is not officially allowed today. No lawyer gets to stand in front of a jury at a criminal trial and say, ladies and gentlemen, you got the power to nullify the law. But I think they should be. I think the law should be changed to allow jury nullification. Because at the end of the day, if the jury doesn't want to convict the person for whatever reason, either the law is wrong or while the law is right, it shouldn't apply in this particular set of circumstances. We should err on the side of a not guilty. Let's give the jury back the, not just the power, but the information that they have the power to nullify the law. If they don't want to, they don't have to. But we're in favor of jury nullification because at the end of the day, the jury is supposed to be the final check on a tyrannical government, state or federal. And that power should reside in their hands to judge not just the facts, but the law. Okay, my position's pretty clear on jury nullification. All right, if you like this video, like, subscribe. You can agree or disagree. Love to hear your comments. Comment below positive, negative, Mark, I agree, disagree. it's okay. We're Americans, we can agree to disagree. Just do it in a civilized manner. If you give me a civilized response, you will get a response back from me or someone on my team. You can find more information about our law firm at attorneysforfreedom.com. And if you're interested in the Attorneys on Retainer program, which is a program administered by the Attorneys for Freedom law firm for people who want to make sure that they have a team of criminal defense lawyers ready, willing, and able to defend them. They get charged with a crime and claim self-defense is how I acted, even if they blew it and it was a bad shoot, even if 
a whole bunch of other factors which are exclusions in many other programs. Those are not exclusions for Attorneys on Retainer. If you're interested in that, attorneysonretainer.us. Thanks everybody for listening. Peace.